Hi hey everyone, day seven. I just realized that I hit the record button, but I have my little remote control for my little selfie stick. Um, I'm crazy tired, so I'm gonna be quick and concise today. I'm in my home away from home, which is the bathroom. Um, you will notice that I'm wearing my tiara, because I'm celebrating. All right, random factoids for where I am today. Um, I had four doctor's appointments today. Uh, well, three, two virtual, one in person, and one over the phone. Uh, so first did my nails yesterday. I only did three out of the five because I need to keep these two free for the pulse ox. My oxygen level has been okay. My respiratory, my respiration could use improvement. Partly because of this, partly because of COVID and long haul stuff. So uh, I, as one of my, in one of my doctor's appointments today, they said I have to make abrupt breathing abrupt deep breathing as exercises um so to do item uh so i met with the nutritionist virtually today i talked about my stomach because uh i last went to the bathroom on thursday i think of last week the day before surgery and my gi system was not up and functioning and it's now thursday after the friday of surgery which is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, seven days, seven days. And I had no bowel movement. Everyone poops, so like, whatever. Uh, I'm wearing the tiara because I had a bowel movement this morning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the things you never thought you'd share on YouTube. Um, nothing super glamorous. Um, it wasn't like a Mr. Hanky. <laughs> he didn't go, hi ho <laughs> but I was very excited just that things started moving and then my stomach's been achy ever since and I'm celebrating with ice cream what I just had which is completely counterintuitive because ice cream is constipating but I don't really care right now I'm celebrating a couple of things so that happened after the nutritionist appointment um so I felt good about that um, I'm crazy bloated um it's not even just bloated. My stomach size, when I talk about being looking like I was pregnant, I look that way again now. And I don't know if part of that is because of the stuff that I ate or, or medicine I took to get my intestines going. A uh, thing I learned too was that it is not abnormal to go a week without having a bowel movement after you've had surgery when you have anesthesia like this. Um, my surgery was six hours long and it just takes time. So like the amount of time after you have your surgery is not like real time, it's like post-surgery time. Uh, so, you know, if you're going through this, whatever, and haven't had a bowel movement in a week, seven days is kind of the cutoff where you're like, all right, I should let someone know. Um, but uh, if you're passing gas, that's a really, really good sign. It means that things are moving, but it just takes time. And apparently this morning was my time. So uh, uh, little things to change in my diet just to help. I'm uh, sorry, I've been moving a lot today and I have like, other exciting news to share. My chest just hurts a bit because I've been walking a lot today. Um, and again, that's not, that's not all from the surgery. That's also from COVID. Um, Sorry, that hurts. I also uh, use the wipes on me again. My armpit hair is so friggin' long that it's sticking. Like the wipes are great, but they're making it stick because the one smells like coconut lime and whatever's in it, it's making it stick. So it's uncomfortable. The bra I have is so friggin' itchy. Notice I'm not wearing a button down shirt, but the, you know, there's my bra and it's just super itchy. It's stretched out, um, whatever. Then I had an appointment with uh, the social worker, which was really weird because I haven't seen her since before surgery, obviously, but she was the first person that was like my breast person of help that I saw before and after surgery in a Zoom. So it was just weird that I'm like, wow, I've come full circle. I'm on the other side of this. Oh, and a phrase she used, which was so awesome. And I asked her if I can quote her and she said, yes. 
she said it's like coming out of the darkness and into the light I'm like is that a song that sounds like it should be a song but that's totally what it was the darkness is the not knowing what's going in your anxiety is just through the roof and now on the other side not light like heaven like oh more of like you have light because you know now what clearer questions there are to ask and what kinds of things to really be worried about or not worried about like when i got this shirt and i'll just stand up real quick oh i got this shirt and like i, I mentioned this or something and it's kind of short um a little spoiler you ready here's my spoiler look at this i have a shirt on and look you can look down do you see anything except for my bloated belly no do you know why oh, stay tuned my hint is this there's something in the pocket which you can figure out what it is but it's not totally what you're thinking what it is shower chairs are your best friend go get one Ugh. i bend over like i'm eight months pregnant ah uh, so i'll get to that so Talked with her about the, uh, the Massachusetts Paid Family Medical Leave Act and my leave for work, because that's still, um, there's this, make sure you check your paperwork many times. There's this, uh, uh, what seemed like a small typo, <laughs> but it wasn't a small typo, because they put the wrong month in, and it looked like I was taking leave and I was going back to work next week, and I'm like, uh, I can't go back to work next week. <laughs> like, I can't even lift my arms to, like, friggin' brush my hair really <laughs> anyhow it's fixed it's correct that it was just a minor thing my in-person appointment today was with plastics so it's been a week pretty much i had the surgery friday um it's been you know it's thursday i have no, I, I i i feel like i should just put this live but i have other vlogs i've done every day it's just i need to run them by my kids one more so than the other because the other one I told already. The other one, uh, I'll tell you straight out, it's a video of me um, emptying my drains. A very vulnerable video. And I'm not going to put it up on YouTube until I know that it's okay with my kids. So uh, it'll be out of order for a couple of days, whatever. Um, but I can't have them seeing it without, you know, or having you seeing it without them seeing it first. Uh, so today was my follow-up with plastics, which is the slang for the plastic surgeon. And, um, they removed, they removed two of my drains. Woo! I'd be more excited. I'm just so tired. I walked out my stairs. This, today was the first day I've been outside, outside of like my balcony. I've been down the, all the stairs and outside since... Saturday when I came home. So I got to the bottom of the stairs and I'm walking down and I was hooped. I get in my friend's car, we drive down to the hospital. Um, I got there and went to the wrong building because I just got confused. There's too many friggin' doctor's appointments again. And uh, when I asked where we're supposed to go, she's like down the hall to the left past the cafeteria. And I'm standing there like, I knew where the cafeteria is. And I'm like, that's pretty far to walk. And I was huffing and puffing. And I'm like, I can't walk all the way down there. I just can't. So I saw a guy who was, who was kind of hobbling in and he, uh, somebody came and noticed him hobbling and got him in a wheelchair. And then Barb was like, you want a wheelchair? And I'm like, no, yes. There's no way I could have walked. I just couldn't. So she got the wheelchair for me and whatever. I needed it. Wheeled me down to the appointment. Like there's something wrong with me. I just don't have the respiratory strength to get down to where I needed to go to. And told them also it's not because of all this. It's, it's COVID is a large part of that. Um, so yeah, there was my little ride to the appointment. The appointment went really well. Um, my two, I mentioned on the other vlog, which hopefully you'll see soon, that two, I'm gonna like burn these. My, my drains uh, one and four are no more. Um, they were removed from my body today, which is a really weird thing and I truly did not feel a thing. Um, underneath my bra, 
well, I have a t-shirt on, so you can't really tell much today. But it's so nice to have a t-shirt on. Ugh, the, the, the collar's really wide, so I, I could easily just pull it over my head. Um, but there wasn't much output, and I did not drain, I didn't empty the drains at all until the appointment, which was at three o'clock. I was back to back with appointments, so I didn't take my Tylenol. And I ran out of Oxy today. Today was my last, at five in the morning was my last Oxy. And they won't give me more. Um, so I have to just deal with Tylenol and just take it consistently to keep my pain under control. Take it easy more so, listen to my body um, and not rely on some narcotic. And it will help my stomach too because Oxy is very constipating. Um, so it's one less thing to have to worry about the constipation with the medication. I still will, will be somewhat constipated just from the anesthesia from the surgery. Um, I had a really tough morning emotionally, by the way, about a few things, but I don't really want to get into it because I don't want to go back into a negative space. But there's so much more of an emotional part to this surgery. And a hundred times fold doing this surgery during a pandemic. It makes me so mad. Our numbers are going back up across the world. There's a, there's a, you know, this new Delta variant, whatever. Kids, oh, uh, I think kids, at least in my town, everyone's back to you have to wear a mask inside. So again, I'm kind of put back in a bubble again, which even if you're not sick, it's really hard when you're an extrovert like I am and you're told that you have to cover up, you know, it's the right thing to do. I'm very pro health for everyone, which is why I'm pro mask. Um, anywho, switching to that. So my drains one and four were removed today. So what that looked like, I wasn't gonna videotape it. Oh, I gotta finish up. So what that looked like, I used to, when I put the vlog up, hopefully I had two tubes hanging out of me here. I can't even, I can angle a little bit down for you. All right. I had two tubes coming down here that led to my two little grenades. It's in my little pocket here. There's one grenade right here, which I just emptied them. There's a little bit of gunk here, but not a lot. So my pocket, this is my sweatshirt. I can't close my sweatshirt, but when I stand up, Look at this. It looks like I just have a t-shirt and a hoodie on. So exciting. Whoop, whoop. I'll back that up a little bit more so you can see. My arms just really hurt. My bathroom selfies, whatever. But you know, I just have a regular t-shirt on and like, looks like I have a regular hoodie on. But when I go whoop, whoop, there are the pockets and inside the pockets is my drain. I used to have two drains in each pocket. And now I don't. Um, to celebrate that, I put on my Vegas lip gloss, see? Just for all of you, and for me. Uh, so she removed the drain, I didn't watch it, I didn't wanna watch it. I just asked her, can you please tell me what you're doing before you do it so I can brace myself? Um, the only thing, there was tape that she peeled off, which is like peeling off a Band-Aid that big, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> So she peeled that off. It didn't hurt so much on the right, but the left side, which had been bunching up, that hurt when she peeled it off. It's adhesive on your skin. Like, it's gonna hurt. Which in a way is kind of good, because I'm like, oh, I have sensation. I guess that's good, you know, whatever. Um, but she peeled that off, and then Barb said something about the hole, and I'm like, I don't want to hear about the hole. La, 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 la. I don't want to hear about that, but there's a hole, apparently. She said that, I know you can't tell from here, but my boob goes from here to here. You know, the swelling really starts kind of up here. Um, I did find out my bra size, by the way. I'm not sharing that publicly because whoever's my next person will have the joy of finding that out for themselves. My boobs are slightly smaller than they were before, but I mean like slightly smaller. Um, when I saw how much they weigh, like my boobs alone weighed almost a pound and a half, I think. Um, and now they're like 1.2 pounds. So visually, I'm probably not going to see a difference. I was surprised because I thought he was actually going to go lower than that. Uh, CC wise, I thought he was going to go to like 500 CCs, but he went to 560. 
like, all right. And my next appointment with him, which will be another week, um, I was with the nurse practitioner today. I really, really, really want to see Dr. I didn't say his name. I really want to see my plastics doctor just because I haven't seen him since this is over. And like, I just want to give him a hug and be like, thank you. <laughs> Cause they do look, I mean, other than the, the scar, which will go away, I'm looking at them in the mirror now more and I'm like, they look more like boobs. They're settling down. They're not as, I mean, they're still high, but they're shifting. And I have like a little bit of like little cleavage again. Um, and the best spoiler, I don't have it here. I have to wash it. I might not have to wash it, but I got a new bra because this one is like all stretchy and whatever. Guess what color it is? It's not white and it's not pink. And they only had one left in my size. They only had one left and it happened to be in my size. It's black. So now I get to wear this black new bra with like, I have like these sheer shirts, which I showed you during the vlogs, whatever. And now it's like, I got these kick ass new boobs, cancer free with this new black bra. And I'm like, yeah, I'd root, root more, but my arms hurt. Uh, so yeah, all good news from the nurse practitioner. She um, she took the, the tape stuff off, whatever it's called, um, replaced, it looks like almost like a like a washer but it's made out of some material that's like soft and uh like cushiony i guess and it goes around the tube and then put that back on with just the one thing you know but in the meantime she's like i said when you pull it out like is it gonna hurt what's it gonna feel like because i didn't realize the, the one that was removed the small the one that had the smallest output it comes up along here and it actually comes up along the side on the top of your boob. The other one is more towards the bottom, which makes sense as to why there's more um, output on that one. Um, but she told me that I take a deep breath, in, deep breath in and as I was breathing out was when she pulled it out and I swear I didn't feel a thing on either side. Um, after she took it out on the left side, it felt a little bit weird. I can't even try to explain what it felt like. It just felt weird. Um, but now like I have no idea. I feel physically lighter. It's not like they're that heavy, but I feel physically lighter. I feel mentally lighter. I just feel lighter. The fact that I could put a t-shirt on and a hoodie and not have the hoodie closed is just such a good feeling. The mental part of all of this is so much more pronounced now than throughout the whole thing honestly more pronounced now than it was when I found out I had cancer and they tell me that's normal I just find it interesting mornings are continually awful for me this morning was awful for me um but let me finish up with that so I, I finished up with the plastic surgeon she with the nurse practitioner done with drains one and four she got rid of them I want to destroy these in some inappropriate way <laughs> I want to burn them but they'd smell really bad uh no more of these so I'll figure out what to do with them I'd stomp on them but that's not gonna feel good um I realized that I did not take Tylenol before I went for that appointment I would suggest that if you're on pain meds that you don't really skip a dose or try to push yourself and you certainly don't skip a meal like I did before that appointment when you do your follow-up. It wasn't intentional. It was just that I had a Zoom from one to two, and then I had to be at the hospital at 2.45, hopefully 2.30, and then I needed extra time to get to the room, so I didn't actually get to the appointment till like a couple minutes after three o'clock. But I wish I had had the pain meds working in me before I had that taken out. Um, it didn't hurt, it just felt weird. But her peeling the that big plasticky duct tapey thing, <laughs> that's what hurt. It's like a band-aid, just you know, big. So she she put a new washer on around I didn't wash I didn't watch any of it. I didn't want to watch any of it. Just let her do her thing. She um and then she put the washer on, she you know, put the 
tube on. She didn't drain the tube. I just did that, or Barb did that when we got back home and then put another sheet of the plastic stuff on there. And she kept mentioning casually, like when you shower, blah, 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 blah. And what was discussed when I talked to the social worker was having a home health care person come to help me shower. That was one of my breakdowns this morning. I know it might look however, and I spent time flat ironing my hair today, which I think I needed to, but my hair feels disgusting. It feels gross, it feels greasy, it's thick, it's dry. Um, I'm starting to go gray again when I just got my hair colored. It's probably from the stress. I think I slept three hours last night because I made the stupid decision to, knowing I had these appointments coming up, I read all, except for I think one because I ran out of time, I read all of my post-summary um, details on the gateway last night until wee hours of the morning, which was dumb, really dumb. I told you I don't have the best bedtime patterns. I don't know what will make me change that. I don't know. Gotta slow down. Uh, what was really intriguing, and, and maybe is another vlog, I might go through and share some of that with you. They do a timestamp of everything. They say like, you know, 8.03 a.m., you know, Dr. So-and-so did so-and-so with this instrument, blah, blah, blah whatever so detailed. Like I have a timestamp of when they removed my breast tissue on the left side. I have a timestamp that says the plastic surgeon went in at this time and got and, and put this size of the implant inside of my boob and sealed it up, you know, put it inside of this and sealed it up with this and whatever, like to the, to, you know, to the second. It's just, it's crazy. Cause you're asleep. You're not even aware of any of this stuff. And like, here's like a timestamp of all the things that were done to you. And it was just so bizarro to me because there's a lot of medical jargon. I don't get what it means. And of course I started Googling stuff, which is a horrible thing to do at four or five in AM. And um, it's just so intriguing. And I understand now why, and there, and there were things I even forgot about. Like my, my, I had adhesive on my, on my hands and I'm like, I don't get why I have adhesive here. But if you Google it, they put your arms out to the side, um, almost like you're in like a cross position, like a crucifix cross position. And um, they tape you down, I think, to keep your hands like where they're supposed to be so they can do their thing. They also wrap this thing around your legs, which I had one of them when I got out of surgery um, that inflates, uh, you know, deflates, blah, 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 just to keep blood flow going in your legs. Um, I can't remember what they're called. But just so, so, so cool. Um, I, I'm tired and I, and I want to get going. So I had those appointments. Um, had ice cream, got a phone call from the genetics counselor. So I'm going to leave it after this one with the genetics counselor. Got a phone call. My genetic testing is done. They tested me for, I believe, 36 genes. Not just for breast cancer, for colorectal cancer, cancer pancreatic cancer, uh, uterine cancer, cervical, I think. Um, there's like five. There's a whole bunch of different cancers they check for. And I don't have any genetic mutations or genes for any of those cancers, which is fantastic news. Um, there's so much information. I, I couldn't possibly share all of it with you, but you get the gist. So really good news. I'm just super, super tired. Um, one thing that is in my family is Lynch syndrome, uh, which is a, gen is, which is, is, it's a gene or a gene mutation that predisposes you to having certain types of cancer, which I believe are mostly colorectal based. Breast cancer, I believe is one of them. Pancreatic cancer, I know is one of them. Um, there is a history of four people on my dad's side of the family that, that all have this gene. So I got tested for it and I don't have it though I was supposed to send the genetic counselor the document from my cousin that has this so that they knew exactly what gene to look for. And even though it has a name like MSG6 or whatever, in parentheses it has like P point greater than 692.53, whatever. And I'm like, you need that too? And they're like, yes. I'm like, oh, okay. So I forwarded that to them. So they keep the spit sample for 90 days um, 
so they can go back to the spit sample and check for that specific thing. There were two specific genes um, that had more detail that they can check for and let me know. But after all the drama, you know, they, they checked for eight cancer genes for breast cancer and then 36 for an assortment of other cancers. So I, my gut tells me that cancer of any sort is not going to be what takes me out. <laughs> which is, you know, is, is good news. <laughs> so very happy. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm really tired. Uh, I'm keeping my tiara on. I ordered a nice dinner for me and, and Caleb and Barb. They're gonna sit and chill. Um, I again feel, I'll stand up for this last one. I'm so tired. It's hard to even get up and it's hard to back up too. I can't believe I'm in the bathroom doing this. <laughs> it's so much like when you're taking all my dating pictures. Uh, I'm my chair out of the way. That's so crooked. And here's like 25 of me. Woo! But again, like I have, it's day seven, whatever it is that I said, six. But like I have a regular t shirt on here, you know? And I have like a regular hoodie on. And I wish I could back this up more, but I really can't. I guess, no, no, that's awful, but that's the best I could do. It's kind of short, whatever. I have my compression leggings on, my camo ones, and then I have this. And even though it's open, you, you know, you can see that this is where the drains are. I do have a hook, by the way, on my bra, which when I get to post in the other video, you'll see. But um, can't really tell, unless I go like, woo, and really push it out. But you can't tell. I mean, that's what you can see right there is that little teeny wire, tube, whatever you want to call it, and then the drain's inside. But unless you're looking for it, you know, you wouldn't see it. So, you know, I'm, 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 it's not that I'm not grateful, but um, you know, what, what I will say, I don't want to end on a, on a negative note, but what I will say is that um, there are so many more aspects of the mental health part to this that I wasn't seeing. Um, and I'm processing that very, very slowly. And my friends, <laughs> and then when I'm up in the middle of the night or I get up too early, honestly, the people I reach out to are the people that are, on, are the most recent on my text things because I can't think clearly to go back and be like, well, who can I ask this for? And someone will text me and, and check in and I will just talk. And I've been using audio messaging a lot. Um, it's just way easier than speech to text. Today, I guess when I was doing that, I was crying so hard that most of what I was saying was not really understandable. <laughs> so I, I, I had a large ask, uh, which I'm not gonna put on YouTube, but I, if it happens after it's done, I'll share about it. I had a large ask in a very vulnerable position. Um, oh, I didn't mention they did clear me to take showers. Oh, I can get, I can take showers now. Um, I just have to watch if my dressing gets wet or too wet. I have to switch it out, but I'm allowed to shower. And that was one of the things that really upset me this morning was my hair. Um, it looks okay now, but I spent 40 minutes on it. Um, and it was really hard to brush. And a really good friend of mine said, well, why don't you just put a baseball cap on? I'm like, oh yeah, duh, I can do that. And then I go in my closet and I'm like, I can't reach my baseball caps. It's too far in and it's too high up and I can't reach it. And um, aside from that, even if I did reach it, I can't get it over my head because my arms don't want to go this high. And I can't, even for the tiara, I'm like bending over to put it up. I mean, I can show that to you. You know, I have the tiara here, but I can't just go like, ooh, put it up. I've got to bend down and like slouch a little this way. I got to bend down and I've got to do this, you know, kind of hunched over to make it stay on my head. And there are exercises, by the way, that need to be done, but it's too soon to do those. She noticed that I'm slunching forward. And she's, so for right now, my exercises are the breathing ones. So I'm not practicing right now. And then shoulders, you know, sh either shoulder shrugs, which this hurts right now, or shoulder rolls, which also hurts. But if I don't move my shoulders, I'm gonna get stiff and can't have that happen. So I'm not gonna apologize for how I was this morning with my friends, but I will say is like, 
Some of you will understand and some won't. The mental health part of all of this and the processing of all of this and that while cancer is horrid for me and a lot of people, most people that go through this mastectomy procedure, it's the after part that's actually the most scary because, you know, breast cancer, it's like you can figure out a way to handle it and deal with it. And then it's out and it's gone for me. But my new boobs are part of me for the next 50 years. And how do I accept them as a part of me? They look like alien boobs. I now call them Barbie boobs. They look like alien boobs. And I have to accept that that's my body right now. And that's not really easy to do. And I have to accept my limitations that, and you know, I didn't know until I went to see her that I couldn't wash my hair. And with COVID, it makes it much more difficult to just say, oh, we'll just have so-and-so come over and do this. You can't just have people come over anymore. I'm compromised right now. You know, I can't get sick. And people are getting sick that are already in immunized. They're getting sick anyway, because there's another variant of this virus. And um, it's a lot. So if I call you and I'm incoherent and I'm sad and whatever, please do the best you can to try to understand. And if I do have an ask, um, oh, gotta go. If I do have an ask, it's something I really do need for myself. And if I'm bawling, it's probably because I'm not used to asking so much for myself. I'm used, I'm used to doing it on my own. But if there's one thing I've learned from all this stuff, you can't do it on your own can't so that's today i'm gonna use my remote to shut off and see you guys tomorrow and gals all y'all bye apparently it doesn't work <laughs> it's not connected ah!